With help, it is now my pleasure to introduce our opening speaker, uh, Sylvain Bittain, who will give us updates and perspectives from the European Commission on persistent and mobile substances. Sylvain has been employed at the European Commission at the team on REACH and the CLP. So very, he's a person asked about the CLP. He has a PhD in environmental toxicology, and he is an engineer for the National School for Water and Environmental Engineering. He was a member of the scientific committee of the Stockholm uh, Convention for POPs, and he is also a member of the Chemical Management Plan uh, Science Committee of the Governments of Canada. So, Vanny, we are very much looking forward to your talk, and I'll have to hand you my microphone. <laughs> yeah, so I will try to, to present what we did uh, since the application of the chemical strategy for sustainability. We are very active, I have to say, uh, in the last few years, uh, in particular from five team on CLP and REACH revision. So, but I will not focus only on that. I will try also to explain what we are doing on all the five. Uh, but this one, I don't know who is uh, creating it, if it's you or if it's us, I don't know. But at least, yeah. indeed, it's, uh, it's quite a nice uh, diagram to explain the vision that we have in the strategy to move a toxic free environment by 2030 and then to push for certain sustainable chemicals. So, it's really something that we are pushing for. Uh, and it's more or less based on that, that we are now developing uh, the revision of which to achieve that, uh, that goal. You are quite aware, perhaps, about the strategy, and that contains several other building blocks uh, about boosting innovation, uh, strengthening the legislation, and simplify it, uh, because it's quite complex, to be honest, uh, improve knowledge and science, and also act globally. So I try to highlight uh, in red what is related to mobility and, and persistency. As you can see, there are a lot uh, on, on this uh, uh, property of chemicals. I will try to cover some of them, not all of them, but um, because I probably can see two things. Um, so this is a nutshell uh, to present the, the approach that we are following in the EU for chemical legis legislation. So you can see that on the top, we have some uh, regulatory tools to collect information about the hazardous property of chemicals. So it's mainly rich for most of the chemical, but we can also use um, temperature product regulation or biocide that aim to collect information on chemicals. And this, is, this information is used, first step to classify, uh, depending on the hazardous property. And this today is done mainly on CLP, but also in other sectoral legislation like REACH, but also pesticide and biocide, for example. Today, for PDT and underground system, is still done uh, in sectoral legislation like REACH and, and biocide. This is so we aim to change that. Based on the information that we, that we collect, uh, the REACH and other legislation and the notification of hazard, we are able to develop an industry to perform a risk assessment and then provide uh, the customer with risk management measures that we have to implement. But for example, there's a safety attack sheet or there's a the risk situation dossier. But well, we are also using uh, the um, classification to act directly. And this is what I will try to explain uh, later on, uh, in particular uh, on the rich revision. The management of risk is not only limited to rich, but also for, for water, uh, waste, detergent, toys. All of these are mainly based on hazard classification. So CFB is becoming one of the most important tool, a key tool in, in the EU relationship. It was already like that in the past, but now with the revision and the fact that we are introduced all the hazard assessment in CFB, we, we strengthen that, uh, the importance of that tool. It's also used uh, for non regulatory action like taxonomy for doing finance. Uh, it's also used for our legislation pushing for, for um, boosting innovation, <coughs> like it's uh, uh, sustainable uh, eco design for sustainable product regulation and also the safe and sustainable by design. 
et Cole Balanzo. So what I wanted to highlight here is that the CFP it's really a key tool. Um, so we are revising Rich and CFP, among other things. So I will, I will move to now what we are doing in CFP. Indeed, we we were very fast uh, on, on the on this delegated act, uh, at least for, for the consistency and mobility. Uh, we discussed for the first time with uh, my current colleagues, perhaps in 2018, as you say, and then almost two years after, we we have a new hazard class. Hazard class. So I think it's quite. Uh, Good. Uh, normally, we're not so fast in the commission. So, I think it's not in the, the big system. So, on, on that, um, it has been submitted to the Council and the Parliament. So, the Council is representing Member States and the Parliament is the consumer. <coughs> so far, we have not heard about the uh, big objection for, from uh, these two institutions. So, we do hope uh, that it will be adopted very soon uh, and published most probably in, in March or April uh, 2023. Uh, then we, we get some time for for industry in particular to, to classify uh, their substances and mixtures for this new hazard classes. So the new hazard classes are not limited to mobility and persistency. We are also adding endocrine disruptors, so quite a, a big step. And also we decided to transfer the uh, assessment on PBT, so that's it on the and toxic, PBDB, from REACH and pesticides to, to CFP. So it's mainly a transfer factor, not really a a new, a new, a new pattern. Uh, we are now, or we, a car, uh, working a lot uh, to develop the guidance. So it is foreseen that the guidance should be ready for the proper implementation of the urban industry um, before, the, before the end of the transitional period. So more or less two years. So uh, a car is uh, in hurry on that. But we are quite optimistic. Uh, first, because for independent shooters, we already have a, a guidance, mainly for category one. What is missing is for category two. So I think perhaps we can manage. For PBT and PBTB, there is nothing uh, that we need to, need to develop. It's already uh, an active, so we can use this new guidance with some, uh, perhaps some amendment. What is new? It's at the end, so the mobility, for which we, we start from scratch. Um, in our proposal, we use KOC as a criteria to decide if it's transit mobile or not. But we get the possibility to use other uh, scientific information, for example, like leaching studies. And then, uh, this is probably what will be quite complex uh, for, for ECA and the expert uh, that will be involved in the decision how to be able to use the result of leaching studies to compare with the KOC value. So, there we need to, because um, the, the legal uh, criteria is a KOC, so we need to, to be able to compare with that value. So then, uh, we will have a lot of discussion. Uh, it is foreseen to involve the uh, experts from a different uh, domain, in particular, uh, experts dealing with uh, plant production that are, are better knowledge on reaching property compared to people working in reach, which we almost know that or not. In our impact assessment, uh, we've identified that almost 100 could be subject to harmonized classification uh, by 2042. Harmonized classification, it's, uh, it's uh, I will come back on that later on, uh, but it's quite important in particular when we are using restriction. And we are estimate, estimating that almost 700 substances uh, could be identified as PMT and VPDM. But for that, I think most probably we'll have more detailed information later on. What we are doing now, um, so we propose our new hazard classes at the UN, the system. Uh, it has been approved by the third committee in December last year. So we've started, uh, we've started now the, the discussion. We, we developed, uh, we created a, a working group. Uh, the aim of this working group is to decide uh, what the OECD will work on uh, for underground systems, uh, but also for, for the, for the uh, other classes. So there's ongoing discussion uh, there this group. And uh, based on the work done by this group, the subcommittee in June will decide uh, what uh, OECD should work on. So it could be that OECD will work on the criteria for independent shooters, and the UNGHS working group will focus on mobility for the like that. So everything is still open. We all only had one discussion, so uh, to be seen in the coming months. Yeah, uh, on top of the delegated act, sorry, it's a bit um, legal um, jargon, but we are also uh, revising um, CFP. Uh, and 
There you see uh, in our proposal to revise CP what concern the uh, persistent and mobile chemicals. So first, uh, we, we identify that there is a lack of um, correct classification of, of substances for mixtures, so we need to, to improve that. For that, we, we first introduce uh, a prioritization system, uh, allowing member states or asking member states to develop, in particular, harmonious classification for the new other classes on top of uh, carcinogenicity, mutagenicity, and toxicity for production. This is quite important because on the basis of harmonious classification, we can, for example, directly ban the substance for which we are mixtures. So, quite a big step. Uh, then, uh, proving that uh, some members, not all members have enough resources uh, to develop harmonious classification, the same. We are proposing to give the Commission the possibility to, to reset the same. We will not do the job because we are not expert, so we, we will ask the CAP. To do so, and um, we expect that ECAR will be able to, if we have the resources, right, to develop 250 our specific dossier in 20 years. <laughs> what is also very important, it's linked to uh, this uh, substitution, that we want to uh, push for a grouping approach, and not continue to classify substances, their substance, but try to group them based on the cross, Cusar, uh, alternative method, and so, and so of course. Also in, in, in view of that. So grouping will become a standard, uh, not only for uh, restriction, harmonization of classification, but also for registration. And for example, for polymer, uh, most probably we move to a, a grouping approach uh, to register polymer. I don't want to speak about the green, green one, it does not concern uh, the mobility and persistency. Um, what we also we try to improve is what we call the CFP inventory in ECAR. So ECAR received a million notification uh, on how industries classifying or self classifying their systems. And we try to put order on that uh, and not already because it's not so easy to be produced and there is a lot of discrepancy, not a lot, but at least there are some discrepancy on how industries classifying the same systems. So we have really improved that, um, urging them to explain why there is a different notification than the original notifier, also to produce a name of the notifier, allowing them to, to discuss uh, among them, try to see if we can uh, uh, agree on, on this set classification. On reach, um, on registration, what we are doing now is to, to develop a proposal to increase uh, the data that can be submitted by industry, in particular for independent shooters to properly implement the new uh, other classes. But also, we, we will ask, for example, the KOC uh, to go to NEDGE. So, restrictions start at one ton per year. So, we will ask uh, KOC agreeing and should perform a uh, kind of a PMT assessment or PDM assessment uh, from, from, from 10 ton. Uh, we are not changing too much the data requirement for persistency. There, we are still um, making uh, some uh, good screening method for persistency. We have good screening methods for degradability, but for persistency, we are moving. So we are moving from the uh, ready biodegradability to more or less simulation test. And in between, there's not really things that work very well to, to, um, to discriminate if you that could be persistent or not. So this is still a lack of science. Uh, I hope that, I don't know if you're in your proposal, it's, it's, it's in here. We are pushing for non animal testing. Uh, and an important step also is that we now uh, will ask industry to, to register of a premium. Uh, so this is a, a big step because so far there is no obligation to register a premium and it's causing that uh, almost um, 20,000 dossiers will be submitted to ECA. Not tomorrow, uh, the next 10 years uh, or something like that. What I wanted to highlight is what we are doing for what, what we call the generic approach to risk management, uh, It's something that's already uh, used. It's mainly, as I said before, to ban directly carcinogen, mutagen, and toxic for production chemicals in consumer mixtures. The strategy is asking us to extend uh, that uh, approach to additional other classes, so endocrine shooters, but also PVT. Uh, and other uh, chemical other classes like respiratory sensitizer, and so on. We are uh, discussing the possibility also to apply it uh, for PMT and DVM. It's not yet decided, but uh, 
it's uh, there's a discussion ongoing on that, so it's not yet uh, um, the idea of the, of the strategy was to extend uh, that approach not only to consumer product but to professional user. But also, we we have to, to reflect a bit more because most of the professional yeah. users are very similar to industrial users. So normally they know how to, to deal with chemicals. So perhaps the, we have to, to distinguish between different types of professional users. But here, the perhaps are acting more or less like the consumer. So. Perhaps for how the cell will uh, act uh, via its uh, generic response approach. Um, we will propose in, Car in Caracal. So, Caracal is an uh, incubator authority of RIT and CFD, it's a nice acronym. Um, we will propose on, or we will explain how we deal with this uh, generic risk management approach. In particular, we want to, to continue to focus on consumer misuse, but we, we have to reflect also on how we want to extend that approach to articles, consumer articles. Uh, it's very important to, to know that this is not hazard-based, it's a risk-based, so we need to demonstrate <coughs> exposure, but in a generic way, that cosmetic, <coughs> you are exposed to it. So, generically, you can say, okay, if you are exposed to cosmetic, it's a carcinogen, so you have an obvious risk. So, that's what we want to do also for, for articles, but which one? So, textile is also a very obvious example, to ban carcinogen in textile, everyone will be okay with that, uh, because you're to it. So we are discussing internally on what could be the criteria to extend the generic risk management approach to consumer articles. Essential uses, um, uh, we want to use it, uh, and it will be most probably the only possibility for derogation, derogation for consumer uses. But we, yeah, I'm not so sure that there are so many uh, consumer mixtures that are essential for society. Uh, perhaps we have this enzyme uh, producing the north of the year. That could be seen as essential uh, in a water, washing water. But to be honest, we don't see a lot of uh, consumer uses that should be seen as essential for society. Um, the reform of the restriction and authorization. We, well, we in there we, we need to, to reform it because we, we did some mistake. Uh, for example, we did not select properly. Uh, the substance that should be subject to authorization compared to restrictions. So now we are in a, in a difficult situation, not clear on the for the time being, but then it will be transmitted to the Commission that will receive hundreds of applications for authorization for the specific numbers. And it's very difficult to deal with such a many uh, applications for authorization. So we want to reform the restriction on authorization. We want to simplify it. Uh, and we want to take better decisions. And to take better decisions, a more informed decision, we need more data for our industry. So, so, so far, I mean, we receive information from registrant, but we don't receive a lot of information from the dancing user. So the idea is that as soon as substance, for example, is identified as substance very high concern, so put on the list, dancing user will be obliged to inform us about, I use that substance in detergent, I use that substance in uh, toys or whatever. Um, and we will use this information to, to decide what would be the best regulatory tools to deal with that substance in the different type of, of, of product um, in which it's used. So we, we try to be more uh, meaningful. Um, we want to use essential uses, uh, but again, by trying to simplify the, 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 the system. So one of the ideas is to, uh, for essential uses to, to give a derogation that ensure you not be obliged to apply for authorization or will obtain a derogation in restriction, if we can demonstrate that the use is essential. Yep. If the Commission decides uh, that it's essential for the member states. We will use organization uh, like um, Industrial Emission Directive, uh, OSH, uh, and we will try to simplify by giving possibility for, for industry to, 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 to ask for derogation for general applicability. This is the timing for reach. Uh, so, I put in red this uh, Swedish presidency that we will do our best to be ready by June, but uh, it's not so easy. Uh, but we will do our best. We are making a lot of progress on, on the other file. Perhaps some of the that essential uses is quite tricky, so we are not so sure that we've uh, already identified the best approach to implement essential uses. So I think the discussion tomorrow will be useful uh, to, to, to take some idea. And then we will act also via committee So it means that we put into to the, to the Council and Parliament, in particular for data requirements. So what I said on the OCR, what then done, 
it can be done by commutality without going with this big machinery of the council environment. I don't know if I'm already. Hurry up. It's okay? Yeah. Then uh, another approach that uh, we want to implement is what we call one success one assessment. And this uh, normally will help uh, to, be, to be more coherent, uh, efficient, and effectiveness on the on safety assessment across all uh, EU regions. I forgot to say that for the essential uses, uh, we are developing a staff working document that should be applicable to all EU legislation. So this should be published before June. And then we are reflecting on how to implement social uses in reach in our proposal for, for rivers in reach. The same for one just one assessment. It's not limited to reach, it's for all uh, legislation. So it's to, to, to decide uh, how to who should initiate the dossier, so better synchronization between the different actors. Grouping is uh, it's all that. Uh, and then the allocation of tasks and who is doing what uh, and so on. So I, I'm speaking up uh, mainly to, 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 to explain what we want to do on, on data. Uh, we want to, 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 to have ready a, a no better data form on chemicals, and they should be ready soon, right? I know. June and uh, December, that uh, will give you access to all the information in one single access. Um, it's not limited to tox and ecotox, so it's also include uh, <coughs> monitoring data, for example, via IPCAM. And we also try, but it's not limited to mobility and uh, to to have a centralized <coughs> repository for some specific value, like what we call PNED or PNED. Yeah, uh, the next one is probably part more, more important for you. Um, we want also to, to, to develop an omnibus regulation. Again, related to data, but uh, this will be based on a regulatory, uh, regulatory act. Uh, and what is quite important, it's um, to give the possibility for authorities, so it could be a uh, EU agency or a member state or the commission, uh, to commission testing and in particular uh, monitoring of substances. So this is something that uh, should be ready, I put 2023, uh, because again, it's between Q2 and Q4. But this is quite interesting in terms of uh, monitoring data for, for mobile chemicals. Um, where I wanted to highlight that I really believe that the monitoring data is perhaps not used as it should be. Uh, it could be perhaps better used, uh, not only to, to check if the regulation is, 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 is efficient and it's working, but also to identify the situations on which we need to act. So this is quite important to, to continue to work on new tooling. And we hope that some uh, project at uh, PARC, but also SBA for the EU, will help to obtain more information on monitoring, in particular the, the new case on substance present in water. Boosting innovation. Um, there are different tools, as uh, I said before, the sustainable bike design criteria. Um, so this is uh, the approach uh, that uh, has been uh, implemented. We are now testing the system by a specific example. So we are asking the industry to test the system to see if it works, if the criteria are, 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 can be implemented, and if the end we, we, we have a positive result. As a perfect first. This the other EU initiative related to boosting innovation are not limited to set a sustainable by design. We also have the eco design for sustainable product. We have the green claims. Uh, we have some uh, proposal for specific uh, product like the batteries. We have this uh, taxonomy that uh, could contain some uh, criteria related to, to as a possibility of chemicals, uh, green public procurement, and what you already know, the eco data. Then I move to something that is not done by our unit. Uh, so it's what is related to uh, water legislation. Uh, probably you are very familiar with that. Uh, as you have based on what you explained before. So I don't know if I need to present that because there is five slide, or if um, this is more or less the state of where we are. This has been published. It's going to force. PFAS already present that we are acting in particular uh, member states uh, on, on the restriction, big restriction on the group of PFAS 
for all those all uses. Uh, and from our side, we we ask a guy to, to develop a restriction of so five fat form. This is um, what has been the value in the recast, recast of uh, drinking water directive. So probably is not new. It's uh, been published and now it should be implemented by member states. Uh, on the over activity in food and water, so the next ongoing action and proposal that's been adopted by October uh, 2022 on the uh, water legislation, like the uh, wastewater treatment directive, the groundwater directive, and the water from it directive, and so on. So there's an ongoing discussion there uh, on, on, food, on food regulation also, uh, based on the recent SRP, about new, new value that uh, should be implemented. Going fast, huh? um, <laughs> On the uh, emerging pollutant, so this is quite recent. It's what uh, this is from my colleagues, so they are identifying new emerging pollutant, so emerging and it's correct to say that we've had emerging pollutant, but at least not now it's rare. We say on A, so the farmers said go. We're getting a lot of problems, and some basic pesticides. Well, um, so this is a PFAS, so the list uh, that has been identified. I don't agree. <laughs> Some substances have been removed. So I'm sure we'll be with that. Uh, most part is due to the fact that uh, they are not used or there are no <coughs> emissions anymore. Um, yeah, what I wanted to show is um, this slide uh, about the uh, watching list. We are trying to push our colleague dealing with water to not always take into account the city. Uh, and there, they have the tendency to, based on the legislation, to, to be obliged to know the toxicity of a substance to, to monitor that substance. And I think, uh, so it seems that we are moving. So if there is one substance for which we have no toxicity. Uh, there you say. Oh, the chlorbazine. Oh, no, it's what, Davidson? No, the chlorbazine. So at this water chlorbazine, they are looking at it only based on persistence in mobility. So it looks like there is a progress there, but there's a tendency to still take into account the toxicity in the watching list of substances that need to be monitored in water. I mean, uh, we believe that perhaps is not the most uh, valid approach. And uh, yeah, because for most, most substances, we don't have uh, toxicity at all. And in particular, how we are moving to uh, non-animal testing anymore. So the aim of, of, the, of the EU for some years to stop animal testing. So the toxicity will be less available, except if we are obviously uh, using a grouping approach and so on. Yeah. Zero PM. Zero pollution of persistent and mobile substances. This project has received funding from the European Union's Horizon 2020 Research and Innovation Programme under Grant Agreement Number 101036756.